With millions of YouTube channels, lovers of the weird, wacky, and what the uh -oh. choose talks a lot entertainment. This is Dick's News US. Hi. Welcome to Dick's News United States. We've got a great show for you tonight. It's called the Guacamole Gunfight. And we've got a lot of crazy ass shit that's happened here in the United States within the past week or so. And uh, I got to tell you, it's you guys are going to have a good time. You're going to have a good time. And if you don't, then that's not really my fault. It's, it's, it's not my problem. I don't know. Is that fan, fan blaming if you're bored with my shit? I don't know. Let's say hi to the chat. <laughs> John Edgar, hail. Long time no see, my friend. Uh, he says, greetings. Guacamole gunfight. This ought to be good. You're darn right. It's going to be fantastic. Hail. Uh, once more. Yes. Vince Womack. Greetings and salutations. Ah, uh, and of course, if you missed the show that I did earlier today, make sure you go check out Mental Health Monday. We talked about trust, <clears throat> and I once again previewed my new song called Hope over there on Bandcamp. If you guys want to support the channel or even just go give it a listen, uh, check out CoreyHarrison.Bandcamp.com and listen to the song Hope. It's It's pretty good, and I'm not just tooting my own horn. Someone else has said that it's a good song besides me. So that counts. Ha! And then uh, Vince Womack says, someone's been watching Demolition Man. Yeah, since I was a child. Hail to Parrot Head. He says, hail, baby face. Hi there. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Having a grand old time. I forgot to put the, the thing up. Hold on. Bloop, Dinus, right there. Not to be confused with the penis, though they're both a D, kind of. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you guys the shit that I got for you. Like, look, here's the chat. It's great, right? We're going to start with our title article tonight it's called the guacamole gunfight because a chipotle guacamole dispute ends in gunfire this was published april 6th 2024 my goodness parrothead says i thought bruce campbell was the chin well he is getting old and he may need someone to replace him you know hail to the king baby but anyway ah uh, chipotle Strong contract. Strong contract. Does it have to do with this? Let's find out. A dispute over guacamole at a Chipotle location on Friday. Friday evening ended with gunfire, leaving one employee injured. The incident took place at a location for the popular fast casual Mexican restaurant in Southfield, Michigan, a suburb of about 76,000 situated just to the north of the greatest city in the world, yuck yuck, Detroit. Yes, goodness. Over on the cr over on the Rumble side, in case you didn't know I was there, go check me out. It's talks a lot of entertainment on Rumble. And if you're watching, uh, yeah, check that out. There's a link for you to click on for my music. But anyway, uh, according to witnesses who spoke with Fox New Fox Two News at approximately 6:50 p.m. local time, shouting erupted in the store, purportedly from an argument between a customer and an employee over guacamole, which the chain allows customers to add to dishes for a slight extra fee. It's a PC version of a Mexican standoff. Indeed. Hail to E. Clay Thomason. Yeah, I can't believe I almost messed that up. It's a great English, like American name, and I just messed that up. Yeah. Anyway, at some point during the dispute, gun gunfire broke out with the customer opening fire and hitting an employee. I was just eating a bowl, and I heard shouting, and then I 
looked over, they're arguing. Witness Thomas Huber told the local news station, one of the workers went back, went to the back. I don't know why. And then when he was in the back, the customer walked around the counter, tried to grab his food and put it in a bag. Then the employee came back and they started fighting. And then we heard a gunshot and just ran out as quick as we could. And there's the disputed guacamole. Dun, dun, dun. Be careful with the guacamole. A 21-year-old employee was injured in the dispute, was transferred, transported to the hospital for treatment, and was reported by Southfield Police Department to be in stable condition after sustaining a wound to the leg. John Edgar asks... Geez, any photos of this superb citizens? No. No, there's like maybe up in this video up here. Maybe up in this video that Newsweek has that's three minutes and 38 seconds long. Let's find out. That's a chunky boy. Chunky, chunky boy, chunky boy, chunky boy. Chunky, chunky boy, chunky boy. No pictures of anyone important. Dang. Anyway. No, I don't want that. You can fuck off. Anyway. Hmm. Vince Womack says, I too have Thompson in my head every time I read E. Clay's name. And E. Clay Thomason says, yeah, a lot of people put a P in my name. Thompson? That's just wrong. Vince Womack with a racist comment. I'm guessing the melanin levels were elevated. Wow. Gosh. John Edgar says, I'm almost that chunky, but I'm prettier. I bet you are, bro. Yeah. I bet you are. Yeah. He also says, bet you 10 bucks that restaurant will deny the waiter's workman's comp claim. Um, Probably. They'll probably be like, well, that wasn't really in the duties of your work to tussle with a customer and then get shot in the leg. Hopefully, more details will be released in the future. The likelihood that we'll hear them are slim to none. So, moving on. Now we're going from Michigan straight to my home state of Colorado. Brought to you by the from the Denver 7 News Network. A man ejaculated on food while employed at a Fort Collins Safeway, police chief says. Sounds like a sticky situation. And his name was Alec Baldwin. Yeah, probably Alec Baldwin likes to shoot people. Uh, he feels no remorse. That's why I say he likes it. I'm just saying. If they were white, the, SA, the uh, mainstream media wouldn't have a problem saying they were white. You're not wrong. And John Edgar is absolutely grossed out by a man ejaculated on food while working at a Safeway in Fort Collins. Yeah. Fort Collins, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently it breaks you different. Goodness gracious. Wow. A Fort Collins man is currently facing 14 counts of indecent exposure, is under investigation for allegedly ejaculating on food while he was in <laughs> an employee at Safeway. Wow. Fort Collins Police Services said the investigation began in July of 2023 when the department received multiple reports of a person who was masturbating outside businesses in view of employees. Fort Collins police say, said the, many of the in, incidents happened at coffee shops. At least one case, the victim was a juvenile, according to the department. <clears throat> Vince Womack says, question is, was it his food? Probably not. Parrothead likes to point out, we now know what's in the secret sauce. That's right. That's why it's extra salty. Ugh. Honey, why, what's this glaze all over the, bar the broccoli? Ugh. Investigators identified Stephen Mas Masalta. Stephen Masalta. 
32, as the suspect. Authorities executed a search warrant at his home in February. Masalta Masalto was arrested for 14 counts of indecent exposure, which is a Class 1 misdemeanor, and booked into the Larimer County Jail. In an update posted to the department's YouTube channel on Thursday, Chief Jeff Swoboda said multiple pieces of evidence were collected during the February search. Swoboda said investigators found videos that showed Masalta masturbating and ejaculating on multiple food items in a Safeway grocery store where he was presently, where he was at the time employed. At the time employed. It's just not what it says in the article, but I gotta, you know, hey, hey. John Edgar says serial ejaculator. Yeah, next thing you know, they're going to have an FBI show about it. Yeah, FBI. Serial ejaculators. <laughs> Parrothead says Dick's division strikes again. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Swoboda said the food was not commercially sealed, which means it was produce, ladies and gentlemen. Check your lettuce. Investigators still have many more videos to go through, but the department believes there are multiple victims and we have multiple felony charges against Mr. Masalta. He salted that all right, Swoboda said during a Thursday's update. The police chief said he will keep the community up to date as the investigation continues. In total, Masalta faces the following charges. Indecent exposure, which is a misdemeanor of 14 counts. Wow. Two counts of attempted indecent exposure, which is also a misdemeanor. Sorry, my brain broke. Uh, four counts of, un of attempted unlawful sexual contact, which is also a mi misdemeanor. Attempted sexual assault on a child, which is a felony, and that's 16 counts. In a statement, a Safeway spokesperson said the company is deeply concerned about the allegations and is working with both police and the health department. I would certainly fucking hope so. Damn! As the publication of this article, Masalta remains in custody in the Larimer County Jail on a $35,000 cash and surety bond. His court appearance is Monday, that was today, at 1.30 p.m. Anyone with information about this bastard is asked to call the department. Follow-up. What do you want follow Denver 7 to follow-up on? I thought that was an actual follow-up on the fucking article because, you know, they could have updated it in the last five and a half hours or oh, five hours, almost five hours since his court appearance happened. Just saying, bro, that was, that's nasty. Just a little stroke. Yeah. Suddenly indecent exposure is a crime again. Leo's just forgot that when pride parade marches by, you're not wrong. E. Clay Thomason says, what if he had AIDS or hepatitis? Is that like attempted murder or something serious? Um, unlawful exposure to a known life-threatening disease is a crime. Um, but that really depends on the municipalities and stuff. Uh, here in Colorado, we take that. Our, when someone gets caught for a crime, it's very serious all the time. There's no like... Uh, well, when it's a serious crime like this one, um, this guy is probably not going to see a lot of jail time. I know he's facing 16 felony counts of uh, attempted unlawful contact with a minor, but let's be honest about the justice system with uh, diddlers like P. Diddler. You know what I mean? But, you know, not in California. Yeah, but this is a... Uh, Colorado, so we're we're almost as bad as California, but I tell you, they sure love fucking up child molesters in my state, at least most of the time. Unless that offense happened in a different state, then they don't really give a fuck, but that's Colorado for you. Hey, hey, fucking wankers. And now we move to another glorious part of the country, but first... Hail to Germ 404. Welcome to Democrats, Colorado. Yes. 
Yep. If the man says he's trans, then he might get off. But um, Anyway, let's head on over to Kentucky, all right? Kentucky man admits to faking his own death to avoid paying over $100,000 in child support. Jesse Kipf, 39, admitted to creating a fake death certificate for himself using stolen credentials from a doctor, according to a plea deal he filed last month. Oh, my. Effing up chemos or just fling them. I don't know what that means. Did I miss one of your previous chats? Nope. Nope. Anyway, a Kentucky man admitted to faking his own death to avoid paying this shit. Outstanding child support of $100,000. Like, holy shit, man. Hot damn, that's expensive. Jesse Kipf pleaded guilty to one count of aggravated identity theft and one count of computer fraud in the U.S. District Court of Eastern District of Kentucky on March 29th. According to the plea deal, this man accessed the Hawaii Death Registry in January of 2023 using the details of a doctor living in another state and created a case for his own death. He then assigned himself as the medical certifier for the case and certified that case, which resulted in Kip being listed as deceased in many government databases. There he is. There's the chromosomally deficient individual in question. Yep. 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 John Edgar says, damn, I wonder what how this genius got caught. Hmm. Vince Womack says he identified as dead. Hell yeah. How the hell you rack up a hundred thousand dollars in damn child support, son? Like how much you have to pay a month? I mean shit, how old is this sack of garbage? 39 years old, and he's a hundred grand in debt. Has he been missing out child support on like 36 kids for the last like 12 years? Like, what the hell, man? Stop doing meth. Stop doing meth, Kip. Kip. I bet that's a name that's easier to say without your teeth. Damn. The defendant also infiltrated other states' death registry systems. Wow. Using credentials he stole from real people. The defendant faked his own death in part to, in order to avoid his outstanding child support obligations to his wife. In addition, Kip admitted to hacking into private business, governmental, and corporate networks with information he stole from other people and attempted to sell the access to networks to the networks to buyers online. Like this man is crazy crazy intelligent, all right? Pay attention, kiddies, because we're learning things, all right? His attorney, Thomas Michelli, 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 did not immediately respond for requests for comment because he was like, what the fuck? How am I going to defend this man? Kip, Kip's crimes reported in more than 195 thousand dollars in estimated damages including more than seventy nine thousand dollars in losses to governmental and corporate networks and more than one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars in losses suffered by his ex-wife who hot damn what did this man do for a living that she can get that kind of money out of him or at least try i mean come on he has agreed to pay restitution to all parties. How in the hell is he going to pull that off? Kip was initially indicted by the federal grand jury in November 2023 on five counts of computer fraud and three counts of aggravated identity theft. He was accused of illegally accessing websites for Arizona, Hawaii, and Vermont, as well as businesses, Guest Tech Interactive Entertainment, LTD, and 
Milestone Incorporated. Kip was also indicted on two counts of making false statements on applications in connection with federally insured financial institutions for allegedly opening two credit accounts in 2020 and 2023 with a false social security number, according to the indictment. It sounds like this man is a regular menace to society. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I mean? Dang. The initial charges carried a prison sentence of 30 years. Hot damn. After taking a plea deal, Kip sentence faces a maximum of seven years in prison and up to $500,000 in fines per court records. His sentencing hearing is scheduled for the afternoon of April 12th. Make sure you don't miss it. It'll be on Little Bob's Big House of Legal Problems. Hot damn. That was a crazy read. John Edgar is laughing his ass off. That's good. That's good. Vince Womack says, when men can't afford to support their child, they go to jail. Women get government assistance. Wow, you're really on that soapbox tonight, bro. No offense. Love you. But hot damn. Anyway, Vince Womack also says, at least some states have started mandatory, mandatory paternity tests. Yeah. It should be required in every child support case, <laughs> period. And it's also my personal opinion that this should also, in my personal opinion, DNA test the wife to see if the child is stolen. Just saying, you never know these days. Well, he's not his daddy, but you're not his mama, so you're going to prison, bitch. John Edgar says, I'm guessing those business sites he hacks. We're porn. Uh, probably. Probably. I, I won't. I won't argue with that in any way, shape, or form. Honestly. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure you hit the Ko-Fi link that's pinned on YouTube and at the top of the Rumble chat. Now that I've said that. Yeah. E. Clay Thomason says, you need a spit tune because every time you say kip, it sounds like you're spitting out your chew. Well. You know, I had to make sure I pronounced his name right. Kip, Kip, Kip. Realistically, his name is probably pronounced Kif with no P. But, I mean, that guy probably doesn't have a P. P, 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 P. -p. And now, for our Hope for the Future segment, we turn our eyes to California. A nine-year-old who misses school bus drives his mom's car to school and sparks a police chase. This is brought to you by CBS19.com. That's actually CBS19news.com. Oroville, California. A California police officer got a shock surprise when the car he was chasing came to a stop. Behind the wheel, a nine-year-old boy making his way to school. Just shock. Several other officers showed up as well, and it was kind of one of those, like, no one really believed it kind of things. So several officers showed up to the scene where there was, in fact, a nine-year-old boy driving the vehicle. Officer Terry Dunn with the Oroville, California Highway Patrol stated, Officer Dunn noticed that the car stopped in the middle of an intersection of 4th and Grand. Then he announced over the PA system for the car to move, to which the boy turned onto 4th Street, making his way through this intersection and then through the parking lot of the Valero gas station at, that I'm standing at. Is this a direct fucking transcription of this motherfucker talking? Wow. They literally didn't even bother editing for clarity. Hot damn. Now, after, a nav after navigating his way through the gas station, he made his way through to the dirt, dirt lot, over w there, where this dumbass was standing, to a dirt lot. Let's. I'm going to edit this for clarity from now on. A few seconds later... 
I didn't notice a little head bobbing in. I did notice a little head bobbing inside. Unusual. I totally thought it was like a midget or something. I exited my patrol vehicle, made an approach, and while I was approaching, I could see a kid, which turned out to be a nine-year-old boy, sticking his head out, saying, I'm sorry, I was trying to get to school. And then the officer pulled out his gun and shot him. No, I'm kidding. That's not what it says at all. Don't take that at any face value. The boy's school was right next door. Wow. At that point, we were trying to identify if that was the school he was actually heading to. Uh, we had we contacted the principal, we contacted the parent, and everyone showed up at the scene. Officer Dunn says, despite no one getting hurt, it should serve as a lesson to keep the car keys out of kids' reach and teach kids the importance of driver safety and laws and to not let them play any type of Grand Theft Auto game because they think that's how it's going to work. I'm kidding. Video games cause violence, right? No. Uh, what? what? John Edgar says, oh no, poor kid. You know, I'd give this kid a pass. This is a grounding offense, but not a trip to juvie, in my opinion. Yeah, probably not. Vince Womack says, something is fishy. What nine-year-old volunteers to go to school, especially in California? Right? E. Clay Thomason says, the kids should be praised for showing some initiative and maturity. Uh, if he was actually mature, he would have asked his mom to drive him to school and not endangered himself and other people. But, again, he was nine. He did show initiative, which I can give him some points for. But let's be honest. The parents should probably pull their heads out of their asses. And now for something a little bit more spicy. Yeah. We're just jumping right into the next one. Hypersexual zombie cicadas that are infected with sexually transmitted fungus expected to emerge this year. I'm going to let that soak in while I have some nicotine. Okay, let's read that again, because that was super fun. Hypersexual zombie cicadas that are infected with sexually transmitted fungus expected to emerge this year. And this, of course, is from CBS News, uh, written by Caitlin O'Kane, April 5th, 2024. Oh my gosh. Get that fucking garbage off my screen. I don't want your video playing on my video. What's wrong with you? Anyway, trillions of cicada will emerge across several U.S. states this spring in an event one expert dubbed Cicada Geddon. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. Not only are more cicadas than usual expected this year, but some of them will be zombie cicadas that are infected by a sexually transmitted fungus that, happen that makes them hypersexual. John Edgar says, ha ha ha, horny cicadas. Uh, I'd watch that movie. I bet you would. I bet you would. And to take a comment out of context, he also says this is the parents' fault. Yep. It's totally the parents' fault for being infected with, like, hyper-sexual fungus. So, like, is this, like, popping X and going to a club? Oh, my gosh. What the fuck? What? Anyway. Periodical cicadas spend most of their lives underground and only emerge 13 to 17 years. No shit. I'm just going to go with my regular voice. Yeah. This year, two broods of cicadas will emerge. Brood 19, which comes out every 13 years will emerge in Georgia and the Southeast. And Brood 8, 10, 13, sorry, wait. So Brood 13 emerges every 17 years, but Brood 19 emerges every 13 years. What? Vince Womack says, similar to the fungus that eats an ants and wasps inside and then takes control of their nervous system to make them walk? Probably. That's what that my thought was. You know, just saying. Uh, 
E. Clay Thomason says, if I only got to mate at once every 20 years, I'd be hypersexual too. Very true, sir. Very true. That is a very, very good point. Like, hot damn. With this convergence, the bugs will arrive in numbers that have not been seen in generations. Matthew Casson, an associate project... Blah, blah, process, blah, professor of mycology... Mycology? Mycology and forest pathology at West Virginia University says both of these broods can be infected by fungal pathogen, pathogen, oh my gosh, called mass, massospora cicadina, 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 massospora cicadina, sorry, sorry, <laughs> John Edgar, self-burn, only 20 years, Psh, amateurs, wow. Once cicadas emerge from the ground, they molt into adults, and within a week to ten days, the fungus causes the backside of their abdomens to open up. A chalky, white plug erupts out, taking over their bodies and making their genitals fall off. Wow. That escalated quickly. And there's the white pustule that will make its genitals fall off. Jeez. You know, most of these funguses exist as a natural population control. And E. Clay Thomas says, damn, you're right. Wow. The cicada continues to participate in normal activities like it would as if it were healthy. If it tries to mate, it flies around, it walks on plants, yet a third of its body is then replaced by fungus. That's really kind of bizarre. Kasson, Kasson, said the reason the cicadas might be able to ignore the fungus is that it produces an amphetamine. There you go. It's an amphetamine to give them stamina. Where have we heard that before? But there's also something else unusual about it. There's this hypersexualized behavior from taking amphetamines, perhaps. Hmm. So males, for example, they'll continue to try and mate with females unsuccessfully because, again, their back end is a fungus. But they'll also pretend to be females to get males to come to them. And that doubles the numbers of cicadas that are infected with... <laughs> wow, that an infected individual comes into contact with. John Edgar says, now that is a horror movie. Hail to Southern Bell. Southern Bell says, they all mate, hypersexual for doing what comes natural, so doing it in fungus makes it bad for them? So the cicadas take Viagra? Yes, kind of. Kind of. Usually, male cicadas will make a loud humming sound to attract female cicadas, and the female will flick her wings to signal she wants to mate. But the fungus has males flicking their wings like females to attract males and in turn infects them. Oh my. Is this like an allegory for something we're going through in modern time? What? In that way, the fungus is sexually transmittable, so it spreads like an STD. The origins of the fungus are unclear, according to Casson. A lot of this is still unclear because there's a lot happening below our feet. The, the fungus produces spores on the cicada and is suspected that when the cicada die, the spores get into the soil and infect other cicada. In a month leading up to in the month leading up to them emerging, altogether in a spectacular fashion, they're waiting there, subsurface. For the soil to reach 64 degrees. It is suspected cicadas are infected when they are waiting underground. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, we basically kind of carry that already. Fungus usually seeds needs a host, like an insect, to carry the spores and spread the infection. Then it kills the host. That's probably why it's bad for them. Hmm. 
Yes. So here's what we're talking about with zombie fungus. It's suspected that this fungus lays dormant for years and begins to become a puppet master when the cicadas reach adulthood. Yes. Yes. Just like the ants in the Amazon. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. But yeah, I just wanted to share that. But not to eat cicadas or kill them, but take photos if they see fungus on the bugs. Yeah, but the more important understanding of this is uh, these types of funguses are often lethal to animals that eat them. And the cicada bloom, as I'll call it, is a very high feeding time for uh, pretty much everything. Like everything eats these cicadas. And then if they're infected with a killer fungus, then there's a chance that that fungus can mutate and, you know, we could have some other types of issues that happen or the species of birds and other animals, snakes and such that eat them could potentially just die. And that could be an ecological disaster. If we're being honest, we already have a severe depopulation issue with a lot of types of birds, uh, reptiles, excuse me. Yeah. Wow. E. Clay Thomason. They're turning the cicadas gay. Yeah, they put chemicals in the ground that turn the cicadas gay and fungusy. It's gross. John Edgar says, makes me wonder if this is going to be a real agricultural issue to worry about this year. And Vince says, it sounds like marriage. All right. Maris is, marriage is a fungus that makes your genitals fall off. It makes you gay. Could be a serious agricultural issue, though, because also if the fungus isn't compatible with what their bodies would normally rot into, uh, like, say, crops and such, then it could damage certain agricultural things, you know. Other animals could possibly have a natural defense for the fungus. I won't argue with that, Southern Bell. Uh, the... The issue I have there is rogue mutation, and it does happen within funguses sometimes. Uh, rogue mutations can happen within pretty much anything, but uh, a rogue mutation where it causes a cross-species thing sounds pretty fucking modern day to me, you know. Just saying. Ah, <sighs> Wonderful times we live in. And I have a great, another great example. Yep. Coming up soon. Lots of farms where this outbreak is going to be is what worries me. Well, the, the, uh, the emergence of these cicadas, unfortunately, is going to overtake the entire, almost the entirety of the Southeast United States. It's going to be crazy. And all the way up the East Coast a little bit. Yeah. Shut up. Cough, cough, gain of function, cough. Yeah. Ohio is a fun place, right? That's what that's what people say. Coming from NBC four I, whatever the fuck that means. Investigative, who knows? Yeah, Knox County veterinarian charged with having sex with an animal. Thank you, Ohio. Because we needed another story about people fucking animals in a time where it seems to be coming, like they're pushing for normalization of this kind of nastiness. Gosh. Anyway, let's talk about this fucked up dude, shall we? Gosh. This is from Sarah Silagi. Silagi. And A. A. Ron Bird. Yes. Anyway, Fredericktown, Ohio. A Knox County veterinarian has had his license suspended after being accused of having a sex with an animal. 66-year-old man was arrested at home late March 31st on one count of sexual conduct with an animal and two counts of domestic violence. Wow. He pleaded not guilty and was released the next day to go on fucking about. Oh, he had a temporary protective order in place because those are always 
and I mean always. Super useful. Uh, in a recording of a call to the Knox County Sheriff's Office, a family member claimed the suspect had been caught having sex with another family member's pony. He, he fucked my little pony. After allegedly being found with the animal, the caller claimed the suspect was hitting a woman. What a dick. A person at the scene called and reported that the veterinarian was drunk and physically hurting family members. Documents from the sheriff's office showed deputies when then arrived and arrested him just after midnight. Wow, the man has been a licensed veterinarian in Ohio since 2012. That's really hoofing it, right? Hoofing. Anyway, uh, on Tuesday, the Ohio Veterinarian Medical Veterinary Medical Licensing Board unanimously voted to suspend his license because they didn't really care for what he was doing to My Little Pony. Ew. Vince Womack says, is the domestic violence against the animals or the wife? Uh, probably the wife or whoever he was beating up on that was like, don't fuck my little pony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. An online business profile linked to the man shows he ran his own private practice, I bet he did, but did not show any association with local hospitals. Sexual conduct with an animal is a second-degree misdemeanor first made illegal in 2017 in Ohio. Wow. High and drunk or just plain stupid? All of the above, madam. All of the above. Gosh, his next court appearance is April 29th. Wow. Like, that's that's some fucked up shit, yo. Like, what kind of drugs and how much alcohol you gotta take to be in that state, man? Like, damn. Like, and it's a pony. Ponies aren't it could still, like, really hurt you if it kicks you, right? I'm assuming. I've never been around ponies. I've always thought they were, like, the devil incarnate. Like, they're just fucking evil, and they should be turned into glue. But that's just my personal opinion, you know? So, basically, he got... <laughs> he one of those brony guys. Uh, yeah, I would go with... Yeah, closet. No longer in the closet. Zoo file. Ugh. E. Clay Thomason says he was probably just treating it for hysteria. I mean, he is a, was a licensed veterinarian. That's a fair point. I mean, I mean, that's what you do, right? When something or someone is suffering from some hysteria of some kind, he just you just ram it home, right? Remind me never to let you be my doctor or my psychologist. Hot damn. And of course, today, hey, there's Mass Grave. Hail to Mass Grave. Good evening, fellas. Good evening. Good evening. And Jeremy for Germ 404 says, LOL. Ha ha. Laugh out loud. He he. Ho ho. Ha ha. He he. He he. We all know that there was this eclipse today. And like all these people were like, oh my gosh, the world is going to end because there's an eclipse. Oh my gosh. I got news for you. It didn't. But that doesn't mean some people didn't lose their minds. And this would not be a dick's news, in my honest opinion, without a Florida man article. So, brought to you by Florida Woman uh, from WTXL, ABC 27 in Tallahassee. Uh, yeah, w woman claims God directed her to shoot cars on the I-10 in Florida during the eclipse. The highway patrol has took it take took the woman into custody. Well, no shit. Like hot damn. Vince Womack says, I could say I could one again once again say something about women, but the people here don't like that. Some people here don't like that. Well, you know, they you you can't be a crazy bitch unless you're a woman. That's why they're called crazy bitches. Just saying. 
Uh, Flor- and John Edgar says, oh, no. Here we go. Florida, not going to fail us. Massgrave says, they turned CERN on today. We don't know if the world ended or not. Oh, wow. I blame CERN for a lot of things, but that's a different thing altogether. Uh, e. Clay Thomas says, oh, man, God is such a prankster sometimes. Isn't he? Isn't he? He's like, you know what would be really funny right now? If you just shoot bullets at those cars. Yeah. Yeah. This article, of course, written by Channing Frampton. Just talking about Frampton. No. Was it Samson? Yeah, pretty sure. Talk about Samson. Fly me to the moon like that bitch Channing Frampton. No, wait. That's not how the song goes. Anyway. So here's the bullet points. So Monday, Florida Highway Patrol took a 22-year-old woman from Georgia into custody after she shot cars on the Interstate 10 in Florida's Panhandle. The woman had recently checked out of a local hotel and told staff she was going to do a shooting spree directed by God in relation to solar eclipse. Drugs are bad, okay? Uh... Read the report below to see how they took her into custody. So, look at this. All right, she got onto the I-10, she shot somebody, and then they caught her way over here. Like, damn. Like, damn. Southern Bell says some, or smoke slash solar rays got in her eyes. Total eclipse of her mind. Hey, hey. E. Clay Thomason says, I wonder if Channing woke up this morning with a wine glass in his hand. Perhaps he did. Perhaps he did. Highway Patrol troopers responded to a report of an active shooter in Holmes County. The suspect was reportedly a female who had recently checked out of a local hotel and told staff she was going to do a shooting spree directed by God. The suspect, driving a purple Dodge Challenger with Georgia plates, entered I-10 at the 112-mile marker and traveled westbound. Within five miles of entering the interstate, the suspect fired multiple shots at another vehicle traveling on the interstate, striking the passing car multiple times. The driver was struck by glass fragments from the window and grazed on the arm by a bullet. However, he was able to steer his vehicle onto the shoulder of the roadway and away from the suspect. Continuing westbound, the suspect shot at another vehicle near the 107-mile marker, hitting the driver in the neck. Crazy bitch! The victim was taken to a nearby hospital and is currently receiving treatment. Responding troopers located the suspect near the 96-mile marker, conducted a felony traffic stop, and took the suspect into custody. Or, after taking the suspect into custody, troopers recovered an AR-15 and a 9mm handgun within the Purple Challenger. Let's just be honest, if someone is driving a Purple Challenger, they probably... probably are not mentally stable. Not unless, of course, that Dodge Challenger is like a, like, 60s to 70s Dodge, you know. Mmm. Nice. E. Clay Thompson says that was a Frampton comes alive joke. Okay. I don't still don't get it, bro. I'm sorry. Massgrave says crazy bitches must be his weakness. Crazy bitches. Damn. The suspect identified as Taylon Nichelle Celestine. Celestine? Celestine. 22 of Georgia. Hmm. Taylon. Nichelle, like Michelle with an N, or Nickel, depending on how you per- might pronounce that. I don't know. Celestine. Hmm. She was taken into custody without incident, other than shooting people. And she's booked on the following charges. Attempted murder, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, and improper discharge of a firearm. Just to sweeten the pot a little bit. Highway... Patrol Bureau of Investigations of Intelligence and Intelligence, or BCII, is conducting the investigation, which is ongoing. Well, you'll find that she probably has a history of drug abuse, and, of course, she's a bit of a crazy bitch. 
I wonder if she'll actually get off on like was it Reyes culpa? No. Mea culpa? No. What is that? The responsibility thing. I'm a forensic psychologist. You think I'd know this, but it's it's been so long. Can't like mens rea. You might do you think she might get off on mens rea? I don't think so. Just don't think so. Don't trust those crazy bitches from Georgia driving purple challengers. It's a little crazy. Time will tell. Wouldn't surprise me, Corey. Yeah. Mens rea and mea culpa. Yeah. Those are the two forensic defenses that are most often sought after. Anyway. Yeah. Don't you love the United States? Oh, see, can you see? Yeah, I see. It's crazy. Oh, Vince says YouTube didn't like my comment. Well, YouTube's kind of a bitchy, picky bitch. That's bitchy and picky about a lot of things. All the time. All the time. Like, hot damn. Yeah. I was even nice and included one from Colorado. Yeah. Didn't know drugs would do that defense. Uh, if she's found with drugs in her system, she probably will not get off with any type of defense. They're going to be like, you fucked up. Now we're going to punish you. Yep. Yep, the Florida Georgia line right there. Man. Uh, Vince Womack says, no notice from YouTube. Just saw on your screen that it wasn't there. Hmm. Gotta love it. You know, honestly, YouTube is kind of a bitch. And a picky one at that. Ha 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 Yeah. You know, if I wasn't such a diehard patriot for the United States, I might take offense at these people. But honestly, they're fucking amusing as shit to me. You, you can't go wrong with that kind of shit. Yep. Southern Bill says it was because the lights went out in Georgia. A lot of people freaked out about that solar eclipse. I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but we survived. And I don't think uh, the sleeping giants woke up or um, the rapture happened or it was the most important day in history. Yes, I am also. He is also over on Rumble. And if you're not following me on Rumble, head on over there and check me out. Talks a lot of entertainment. All one word. Because Rumble doesn't like spaces. Yeah, mass grave. You would. You would definitely noticed everyone lived. Mm. I don't think everyone lived. I'm sure there's some people that died at the exact moment the eclipse happened, but people die pretty much every minute of every day. Because, you know, every 60 seconds a minute passes in Africa. Just saying. John Edgar says, I'm in Southern Mo. That's Missouri for those of you not around from around here. And was in 98.4% totality. And all it did was get a little dark. Like early dusk here. A few miles to the east, they got a total blackout. Yeah, I've been seeing videos of that stuff all day long. And you know, the one thing I didn't see in any of them was a demon spawning. It's ridiculous. What do they put in these ranch Doritos? I have the farts something fierce. Well, you and you and Culture Casino would get along great. Just give him some yinglings. Yinglings. And use some ranch Doritos. And that's perfect, you know. You could, you guys could have a competition. 
Hell, we could guys could have you try and get a contract with bioweapons division somewhere. I'm sure. I'd enlist my dog and research for that too, because that man, I got this little puppy and his farts are like the worst fucking thing in existence. It's it's ridiculous. Tacos, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Much appreciated. Thanks, bro. John Edgar says, yeah, I didn't see any demons either. Just friendly neighbors being polite and friendly while we watched with eclipse glasses. People panic too easily. Yeah, did you hear the whole, like, what was with all those people freaking out about the glasses? Like, there was a decent amount of people that were like, oh, don't wear the glasses. You can look at it. It's just fine. It's all like, quit fucking drinking bleach. Like, what the fuck? Like, these things are not, like, like it's still the sun. All right, you can't just look at it. I mean, honestly. Like, did they look directly at it in 2017? Did they look directly at it when the last time it happened before that? I mean, come on. Like, hot damn. Vince Womack says the most eerie thing during an eclipse was the silence of nature. No birds chirping, no bugs bugging, etc. All quiet. Yeah, I mean, nature responds to this kind of stuff that doesn't, I mean, they respond to everything. Nature responds to natural occurrences. <gasps> uh, but yeah, I could see how that would be creepy as fuck, by the way. Eclipse in total silence. But Germ 404 says, but the bleach burns so good. Yeah, I know it does. You love it so much. When you bleach your asshole, you're supposed to do it from the outside. Just saying. I thought everybody knew that, but... Gosh. Mass Grave says na nature is natural. Mind blown. I know. It's fucking crazy, right? E. Clay Thomas says, now you tell me about the bleached asshole thing. Jeremy just refuses. Like, gosh, way to go. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So ladies and gentlemen, we're in three minutes down and just because I can, I'm going to give you a full preview of hope. And if you were here this morning, you caught partial preview, but here's the full preview of hope. The new song on my band camp right now. Celebration of the assassination of a future that was never more than a dream. Killed in the night with hope in its eyes and love in its heart for you and me. As the light starts to fade now, I feel the social disease. As it programs the mind to deify the machine, where will we run to? If you're searching for hope now, 404 and not found Out on the day of the digital slave where capitulation comes so easily Manipulated veneration of a penal generation passing down the cultures of fear and greed Hearts, minds and souls have been bought, traded, sold to the lowest bit of bone to the highest family tree Those who spoke out are hanging from the boughs and there's only space left for you and me Will we feel the fire raging as we lose control? Will we even feel it burning as they immolate our souls? At the altar of evil, we all fall to ash With a smile on our face as we're drowned by the past We sacrifice our future for the glitter of gold Now as we face backwards, obscene horrors unfold Will we ever see tomorrow that we have in our dreams? Hear the faint calls of sorrow, drown down by their screams Where can we run to? If you search for hope, then take a look at what's inside You may find it buried somewhere deep inside your heart or mind The only way to lose it is to give your 
yourself to total control For the low, low price of your worthless human soul And there it is, my newest song, Hope, over on Bandcamp. And yes, it's a doomy, gloomy song. If you don't like it, then okay. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, catch me on Monday Meltdown on Comics Division's channel in about an hour. Yeah. And like Vince Womack says, make sure you caress the like button and hug that subscribe. Uh, the goal this year is, in fact, 700. And guess what? 29 more to go. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're like, yeah. And uh, Mass Grave, thank you. He says, I like that. Uh, e. Clay Thomason said, not bad. It's no, I glued my balls to my butthole. Well, that's fair. That's fair. And uh, I wanted to get one more before I take out of here. Hold on. Ah, yeah, right there. John Edgar says, it's pretty cool. I've got a bit of a Rammstein vibe. Okay, I'll take it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, stay sexy, don't get murdered, and as always, have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.